Marty! Marty! Kill that motherfucker! Big Bird! Getting a new tank, a T-54, I believe it's a T-54B. We'll verify on that. Baby had arrived. There's Richie. Rich! Oh, Scott, new addition to our family? Yeah, this is it. Here we go. Another one. It's a T-54B, is that correct? I think so. I think you said yeah. it was B, right? Yeah. It's got the old style track, so I'm happy about that. Nice. Yeah, yeah with a pin hammer. Yep. Like, this deal. motherfuckers, uh, check out the, uh, this is going to be scary, the overhang. Oh, How are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. What's going I on? generally don't wear a hard hat, but oh. this this tank already kicked my ass. <laughs> yeah, tanks don't uh <laughs> got an axle weight because the tank was farther back. Yeah. About four feet. Huh. And um, I'll, let me let me show you what happened. I had to I had to get two chains. I had the guy told me in, in Colorado how to take the brake off and to put it in neutral. Yeah. To pull it forward. Now there's another good news about this tank. As far as we know at this point, of course we're yet to find out, I'm sure we'll have some surprises, but as far as we know, this tank mechanically is in good condition. That makes our work a lot easier. We didn't have a T-54 before, now we do. There's the snorkel equipment. That's there. All the all the oil tanks, all the ammo boxes, everything is there. It looks very, very complete. It's just gonna need some work on the outside, that's for sure. We'll find out what are the mechanical issues, but as far as we know, this beauty is in a good shape. A new addition to our family. A new baby yeah, at Battlefield Vegas. Vegas. As proof, I can show you the sheet and I'll give you the tape measure. No, but hey, it. It, it hasn't moved. So, but when I set it down, I'm going to keep working. All right. There is some writing on the tank. Oh, I am tempted to look inside, but not yet. Not yet. Be patient. Okay. Right here, there's some it's really right here. You read that? Oh, it's hard to read that, but let's see. It's got a red background too. Uh-huh. Not too often that we get tanks that have a lot of the uh, smaller components, like our light shield. Uh, most of the stuff, even like these, are usually destroyed when we 
we get them. Uh, so this is actually kind of a nice change for once. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it is in a good shape. It's like very, very Yeah, it's not even usable. sun correct. Yeah, very usable. I don't know if it's original or not, but it looks good and it is rare. I mean, this tank does look very complete. Like what you just mentioned, you're absolutely right. Yeah, this shield right here for the light, even that, for the IR light. And uh, a lot of little details. I love this, a T-54 old style engine deck. Yeah, we even got the barrels on the back too. Yeah. So that's a... The gun barrel. Uh, well, I mean, we need to, yeah, we'll definitely need to look into the gun and see what's wrong well, with it. Well, I even mean these, the, the external like, Oh, yeah, the drums? I'm not sure if they're original though. I was looking at the writing, yeah, I'm not quite sure if they're original. But it doesn't matter, it still looks cool. Oh yeah, that's definitely not... It's probably U.S., right? It says Union Oil Company. Oh, yeah, so it's uh, U.S. <laughs> drums. But hey, it's all right. It's okay. Drums are... We'll paint them and use it as temporary, and then when we get originals... We'll make it happen. We'll make it, yeah, make it happen. Even this right here, over the exhaust, the shield, on these things, usually it's like beat up, bent, and it looks terrible. This tank is... Uh, like, we pay attention to such details, because it tells us, it shows us that. All right, hold on. Hold on to something. The tank, okay? I guess he's kind of starting it up. Really quick, your opinion about driving this one? Fuck, it's like it's almost like driving the German Mercedes tank. Really? Oh, what do you got that? That, that was pretty smooth, yeah. considering yeah, it it's Russian. I mean, it's definitely not sipping tea while you're driving, but. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so my uh, thoughts on this T54M, uh, looking at it, it seems to be in a rough shape, but after diving around and going through a few of the things, it actually seems to be in considerably remarkable condition. Oh, uh, just a quick question, sorry uh, for interrupting you, but I thought this was a T54B, it's not, it's an M, right? Yeah, so okay. the, and it's a T54M under the Czechoslovakian uh, designation of it. Uh, it does have, it's a T54 that has been upgraded. A uh, few things like gun upgrades, uh, it's got MBC, some MBC protection as we can see. Um, and it, that would vary versus to a Soviet T54M that we know of. Um, and we, we can get into that as we go around the tank, but um, the overall condition is remarkably well as far as easy restoration. There's not a whole lot of mechanical work that has to be done. Uh, th this tank drives pretty smooth. It's got hydraulic assist for your uh, your levers on either side. So, so it's easier to drive? Uh, by far easier to drive. Easier it's, than the 62. It almost huh? makes it harder because you're, I'm used to having to throw the levers and now you just you push them and pull them really easily. So it's, a, it, it's really smooth to ride considering. Nice. Um, but other things that some of our other tanks didn't have, uh, the mantle cover is in remarkable condition. Um, I don't think that we've really had a tank that has had one that isn't falling to pieces. Uh, so some of the things in this are, it's making this restoration really easy. The primary thing that we have to focus on is the gun itself, uh, making it live. But even that is a considerable amount of work from what we've seen. Excellent. Excellent. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be an uh, easier turnaround. Well, hopefully. All right. Yeah, it's true because it always feels that way, but then it's like once you dig in, you just don't know. Yeah, so you You'll put an engine in something. and then it blows up and then you uh, have exactly. to take it back out. Or found the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hopefully a very straightforward restoration. Um, we were fortunate enough that the previous owner did a lot of the major uh, mechanical work, so all our fluids and grease and all our levels have already been done, the filters have been done. So we're going to go through our process here at Battlefield to make the gun live. So to the best of our knowledge, um, this will be another first, it'll be the the first uh, T-54, T-55 tank in the US that is shooting live. So we have that experience from the T-62, which is uh, more complicated. So this 100mm rifle gun, it should be a fairly straightforward. Um, procedure to develop a load for. Very similar uh, projectile weight powder loader to our pre-existing 105. There might just be some uh, different touches in there, but we should be on track to have pretty easy restoration. Uh, and what's happening here Yeah, with this? So what we're doing here, this is the uh, original air filter system for T54, T55, and it's basically um, it's an exhaust venturi kind of system and uh, we found that here in the desert with the hot dry air we just remove this whole entire system and bypass it and we'll do a simple uh, the brand K&N air filters kind of like on the 62 right yeah same the same modification right? we do this modification on all of our tanks it's easy to maintain and with the dust uh, if it does clog up we can fix it very quickly as opposed to uh, this. Pulling this thing out, it takes a lot of cleaning, right? Yeah. Those just, are the filter elements back there for it? Yeah. So that's an issued original fuel filter, uh, correction, air muddy. filter element. The beauty of this is it's cleanable, so the crew can pull this out and they can clean it. They don't have to wait around for... In like diesel fuel or something. Yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah. Like uh, yeah, the crew doesn't have to wait around for a logistical asset to come forward with a... Um, new filters they just clean these ones but you know uh, we don't do long moves we don't do 400 miles in one hit it's uh, just easier for us to upgrade to that simple air filtration system so I would like to thank uh, Daniel Nikinian and Tim Roberts for helping us identify because uh, we originally thought that this was a T54B model but as was pointed out by the gentleman that I or gentleman that I just mentioned uh, the things that makes this a T54M, uh, one of the key characteristics is, is this is an upgraded T54 
And one of the things that you can tell is, is this weld circle right here. Uh, you actually took the one of the uh, vent fans off. Uh, and then there's also on the outside down here, there's a small port for the MBC fan. Uh -huh. Uh, and that is on the inside. Uh, those are one of the major characteristics. Uh, something that was pointed out about the ch that uh, is the difference between a Czech tank and, say, a Polish tank. Uh, the mantle covers that can actually connect it are on the outside rather than facing out, which is apparently a difference between Polish and Czechoslovakian tanks. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, okay, now we are inside this uh, beautiful T-54, and so Scott, just uh, tell us about it a little bit. Um, it's very complete. It has almost everything in it. Nothing's missing. Um, <clears throat> it's in pretty good condition. It just needs a really good clean, a thorough clean. Uh, and being a T-54, this is new for us. We've already done T-55 and T-62, but... Uh, Learning T54, you can already see the uh, <coughs> the manual traverse controls and the electronic traverse uh, motor is configured differently and it is a different part number and uh, just an earlier machine uh, altogether. Definitely on the sights. It's got all the sights uh, Yeah, there, it has right? your uh, gunner's telescope, just a vision block, and then the gunner's periscope. I believe it has night vision because this lead here, it... it uh, goes back behind me but it's a power supply unit for night vision as I'm given to understand so we'll find out. Uh, something cool is moving up here to our, so we have our replenisher and our recoil brake. Uh, big difference in T55 and T62, T62 they move these cylinders down underneath the gun. Uh, so T55. Um, it's visible until up here. Yeah, but these have, they still have the inspection tags. Uh, we'll have to get this translated, but. Uh, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, I'm assuming wow, maybe see. these are either fluid quantities or maybe a date that they changed it back. Oh, there you go. There's the date. Uh -huh. 1988, 1988. Uh, September 14th. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow, from 1988, we got inspection tag. Yep, so this is the replenisher. It's a nitrogen oil filled unit, so. We'll have to translate that, but I'm guessing that is maybe the level that they've put into it. Uh, so that's cool. That's kind of cool. We'll definitely uh, keep that in our historical records. That's, yeah. Uh, but that's, this tank is untouched. It really is. Um, when I can see that weld spot that uh, Richard was talking about from that, yep. I guess, the vent system, yep. right? That they changed? It, it is. is, yep, yep. Okay. There's a tag here, too. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna uh, give a little bit of a sort of an overview for, for our viewers mm -hmm. of this torque, what it looks like. Okay, I got some really bright lights here. I'm gonna close them so you can see. Okay, this is how the torque looks. And um, let me, okay, hold on, let me turn around. Camera around, this is the, that's the stopper for when you're on the march, right? Yeah, you travel, the, elevation travel uh, lock. Tra yeah. So you lock the gun so it yeah. doesn't wobble on you. Mm, that's right. And then we've got here, we have the rack, mm -hmm. right? For the ready rounds, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. Ready rack rounds. So and then you also said we have something, uh, 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 what do you call that system for the turret? When the turret turns into a position? Oh, uh, the quick command is override. So in the cupola here, um, uh -huh. You'll unlock it so it free spins. Might be okay. This is how it works. Yeah, so there's a switch here that has your direction. Ah, okay, so this is the switch. Okay, yeah. I see it. Yeah, uh, we, I see we, it. we went through this in a much more detail on our uh, T62 documentary, but it's essentially the same function. So uh, let's say, for example, the gun is on a target in, in the 9 o'clock position, so... Uh, the turret is orientated nine uh, direction three o'clock of the driver's hull. Yeah. And then the crew commander mm -hmm. flips around over here and he sees a target. Uh, he holds this button here and this switch sends a signal to the power traverse and the turret will essentially spin. And as long as the crew commander holds steady on the target yeah. and doesn't allow the cupola to move with the turret, if he muscles it on target, the gun will uh, flip around until the gun is 12 o'clock with this side here. Nice. So that's a very early, um, 
early form of hunter killer system, if you will. Uh, but okay. that's cool. I, I think we, we, we got this functioning on the T62. I don't see any reason that we Good wouldn't be able to get it functioning here. on this one too. Definitely. Oh, well, let me yeah. give a little bit more view for, for our viewers. Yeah, just go ahead if you want to move the camera around. Yeah, so the gun Let's is see. See. Everything is located a little bit differently from even the Polish T55 and then the <clears throat> Syrian T62. And you know what amazed me? <clears throat> when I was looking through one of those sites earlier, I was amazed by how clean that site was. It was in very good condition. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, look at this, another, another inspection tag. Yeah. I guess uh, I am assuming this is for the gun stabilizer. Yeah, that's the, high, that's the fluid reservoir fluid. for it. And there it is. There is another inspection tag. A real inspection tag, probably from the 80s, too. It yeah. looks like it. Yeah. Incredible. Yep. And the Incredible. Real history. Yeah. Real history here. So, yeah, very oh, uh, basic compared to the Merida polish upgrade and then the T62. But because of that, it's a little bit more spacious. In a way, so yeah. Just a little, not yeah. by much, but it's a little bit more spacious. Right. Can you grab the data plate we pulled off the gun? Yeah. All right, let me also give you maybe a little bit of a view from the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so just to show you what's going on here, we got the ammo bin. This is all under the gun. All the equipment. This is the bag for the, for the machine gun for the shells. I didn't realize it had the fucking through the on it. Hmm. That's what so yeah, we have the, the T54 and T55 gun. It's a D10, 100 millimeter. And then we actually have here the, uh, the, the data tag off the gun with the Czechoslovakian, I believe the Czech um, crest. And then you have here the year of the tank. So this is a 63, 1963 uh, built tank. You know, whereas our T62 is a 72 model. Um, and then you you have the D10 designator for the gun, and I, these are either serial numbers or part numbers, one or the other. Okay. But uh, yeah, that is the. I so, see. Yeah, if any one of you out there that know a little bit more about this, please let us know. We are always eager to learn and understand. So.